check one, two. Hey guys, how are you? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about stop orders in trading. So let's get right to it here. I'm gonna just give you a brief rundown. First, I'm gonna talk about what is a stop order. I'm gonna talk about why do we use stops, examples of when to use a stop order. Can the market see stops? Stop orders, stop limit orders, trailing stops, and how to set a stop order with IBKR and something important with IBKR regarding the trigger method and the price management algo. So let's get right into it here, guys. I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of tools and info that I think is relevant to stop orders and why I think stop orders are so important. And if you're watching this video right now and if you've, if you've never used a stop order, well, good for you for clicking on this video because you're gonna start using stop orders now, okay? And actually, you know what? You probably won't stop, start using stop orders till you realize that you actually need to use stop orders. <laughs> so let's get to it here. What is a stop order? A designation to trigger a buy order above a current price or a sell order below a current price when a desired price is met. So if you see SPY trading at 286.66, I'm gonna set a buy stop above the price here and when the price is achieved, I'm gonna be buying and getting into that trade, all right? For example, let's say I wanna buy and protect the position, I wanna place a sell stop below 286 and when 286 or below is reached, it will sell my position. So there's different kinds of stop orders, there's a normal stop order, which essentially once the price is met, it triggers a market order. And then there's a stop limit order, which essentially once the price is met, it triggers a limit order. All right. And you can also use more fancy things like trailing stop. So let's get into it here, guys. Why do we use stops? The answer is simple. It's money management. That's the only reason we use stops to protect trades or to get into or out of trades, basically. Okay, so I have it written down here. Why do we use stops? Used to get in and out of a position and used to protect or limit the downside of a position. Simple. Examples of when to use a stop order. So I'll give you a couple examples. So let's say scalp trading where you have a certain window of profit. The market moves in your favor and you should immediately protect the trade with a break even or slightly below your break even stop because that is the nature of the scalping style. If you're gonna be scalping around the moving average, looking for a little bit of window of profit there because there's at least a 60% chance that from the moment you enter the trade, that the trade is gonna give you some profit. So when the trade gives you some profit, now you should probably take a partial and put in a protective stop, okay? Because that is just a good money management practice. When you learn how to do this, I think is when your trading will start to make sense over the long term because if you don't do this then you're practicing improper money management in my opinion so i'll say it again here examples of when to use a stop order a buy stop or a conditional buy stop to stop yourself in to a trade in a strategic area all right so like i said above this price i want to set a buy stop i want to get in when it trades at that price or if you're looking to sell i want to i want to set a sell stop for when the price reaches below this price and I will sell and get into a short trade, for example, okay? So you can use a stop order to stop yourself in to a trade at the desired price area. The other example I gave is if you're in a winning trade, a protective stop should always be placed to protect a winning trade. So like I said, you enter the trade, uh, the market gives you some profit, now you take a partial and you protect the trade. Simple, that's it. That's a mechanical process that must be mastered by all traders who want to do this for long term. That's it. Let's move on, guys. Can the market see stops? Now, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm pretty sure stops are not viewable on the order book. Only your broker can see your stop orders, all right? So if you trust your broker, you should be good. If you are trading with some kind of sketchy Forex broker, then that's a little bit more questionable. So I don't think the market can see stops. Market makers cannot see stops, but what you could anticipate by looking at a chart and looking at the tape, you could anticipate where stops are likely to be placed, but you can't actually see them on the order book. All right, guys. So again, a stop versus a stop limit, very simple. So if I put in a stop order on a contract, when the price of my stop is reached, if it's a sell stop, it will sell that position at the market price. Again, remember a market order is basically an indication to the market to say, fill me at whatever price is available in this orderly market right now. But remember that there are algos out there that are programmed 
to pick up market orders and they will automatically front run your order and fill you at a worse price. So that's why sometimes you have to know when to use a market order and when not to. Sometimes in my opinion, you have no choice. Like if you're in an area where there's lots of liquidity that's getting swept in one shot, you need to get out or in to that trade really fast. All right, in that case, you would wanna use a stop. Now, some cases where you would wanna use a stop limit are cases where you might be trading an instrument that has a wider spread, a wider bid and ask, okay? If you trade an instrument like that, you probably should be using a stop limit order, which means that you have a stop price, and when that stop price is hit, it will now trigger a limit order, and you, your order will get filled, but at no worse price than the limit you set, okay? So let's say I'm long, and I wanna protect my long position at a dollar, so I set a stop at 99 cents. So it means that once it trades at 99 cents, that stop is gonna get triggered and it will immediately sell my position at market. With a stop limit, I can set the stop at 99, but I can set a limit at 97, which means that I will not get a worse fill than 97 once my stop is hit. So you might get filled at a better price, but you will not get filled at a lower price than 97. So obviously the risk with a stop limit order is that it never gets filled. So that's why you should always leave a bit of room between your stop and your stop limit, okay? Are you with me guys? Here we go. So last part of the video, I'm gonna talk about how to set a stop order with IBKR and a couple of important things that I was thinking about in regards to stop orders and regards to spread trades and combo trades, okay? So I don't know if any of you have ever tried to trade a credit spread, a put credit or call credit or any kind of option spread. Now, when you look at the bid and ask on a spread, sometimes the bid and ask moves around drastically, which means that sometimes it could be five cents wide, three cents wide, then it can go to 10 cents wide, 20 cents wide, and it can change drastically depending on the smart routing system and if there's drastic moves happening in the market, right? So sometimes these spreads, they move around a lot. So what I was thinking about is, okay, if I put in a stop order on a spread and those spreads start widening, what's the chance that my order gets filled at a ridiculously not fair price. And I learned that IB has certain um, algos that pick up those things and they will not fill your order at a price that is out of line with an orderly market. So thank you for that <laughs> because that is quite convenient. So for example, if you're trading a put credit spread and you wanna fill it at whatever, $50 or something, and all of a sudden the spread widens out to like, the bid is like 30 and the ask is like 80, then you're like, okay, where am I gonna get filled? If I put a stop at 30, it might get triggered at 30, but it won't because IB has a certain algo, like I just said, that will pick up on those kinds of things and it will not fill your order at an unorderly price. <laughs> All right, so how to set a stop order with IBKR. So let's say you have a quote monitor like here. I put in a contract right here. Now you can set up a hotkey to do this or you can just right click and, and do it with an order entry, but let's say you have a hotkey. I'm gonna assume you have a hotkey for it. So I'll set, sell stop. Now the market's closed now, so it will usually bring up this kind of window right here. So if it doesn't bring up that window, what's going to happen is you're going to get an order that pops up here. And once the order pops up here, you will right click on the order and then you can click on modify order ticket or modify the condition and it will bring you to this menu right here, which is the order ticket modification menu. Now in this menu, there is a variety of important things regarding your order, okay? First of all, you can choose your order type, your limit price, stop price, etc., all that stuff, any conditions related to the order. I made a video about conditional orders. You can go watch that. I'll put the link below. Regarding to stop orders, there's one thing that is extremely important right here, and it's called the trigger method. Now, there's a default trigger method for each trading instrument, options, stocks, futures, etc. And I will provide a link right here to this help menu I found on the TWS guide that shows talking about the stop trigger methods. So basically, you can set the stop stop orders to trigger based on a certain thing. So the default is here and you can read that. So you can see for options, the default trigger method is where two consecutive ask price values must be less than or equal to the trigger price. And the second bid or ask must have a greater size if it is the same price level as the first bid or ask. So that's the default for triggering a stop order for an option. Now you can obviously change that. You can set it to trigger when the mid price 
is achieved or something, okay? So, and that's why that's important. So again, let's try that. I'll put in a stop order. And you can see here the trigger method right here under miscellaneous. It's right now, it's set to default. So let's say you want your order to trigger only when the stop price you've designated is the current midpoint between the bid and the ask spread. You want your order to fill at the midpoint. You said it right there, trigger method midpoint. Got it? The next thing is this thing, the price management algo. This is what I was talking about earlier regarding the order fills in an unorderly market. If you look at that, it says, this order attribute activates an algo which caps price of your order if the limit price of your order is more than the allowed distance from the current reference price. So in simple terms, that basically says that it's an algo that is meant to protect your stop order from getting hit. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, okay? If someone knows better, please write in the comment below. Cool. So guys, this menu right here is going to be crucial for setting up your stop order to not get triggered at an unorderly price. And that's it, guys. So on any contract, you can set a stop order or a stop limit order or a trail order, okay? Now again, you can set up hotkeys to put in these kinds of orders, but that's less relevant. This video was more relating to what are stops, why do we use them, examples of how to use them, can the market see stops, and how to set a stop with IBKR. So guys, if that video helped you, then please leave a comment below. So part of the reason why I made this video is because I need to improve my own habit of using stops. I want to get better at using stops. So I made this video for that reason, but if you can take some value out of it, then that is great as well. So guys, I wish you a great day, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Take care.